This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S. It's seven years old, it's pretty slow, it doesn't do 4K video, and it's heavy, it's really heavy. Compared to even DSLR cameras from a few years ago, perhaps the D4, D3, it feels heavier in the hand, the lenses are bigger. It's medium format. Now it's not the same size as a 6x4 film camera, but it is what's regarded as a medium format sensor. That is, the sensor is about 30% uh, larger than full frame sensors. It's a beautiful camera, but what I want to do is compare it to this. This is my Fuji X-H2. It's probably the cutting edge of what Fuji do at the moment, along with the X-H2S, which is the video orientated camera. This is a lot smaller. It's a bit bigger than the X-T series, but it's a lot smaller than the GFX. Yet it packs 40 megapixels, all onto an APS-C sensor, which at the time of recording, I think, is the highest number of megapixels on such a size sensor. Now the question is, what's the image quality like compared from this to the GFX? Now, the answer is obvious, the GFX is going to be better. But what I'm really looking at is how different they are, how much difference seven years of technology makes. This is older technology, older processors. This is higher processors, but on a smaller sensor with a very high pixel count. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take both cameras out find a nice little location, find some nice even lighting, and I'm going to shoot them under identical circumstances. The uh, focal length the same, the aperture the same, the shutter speed the same, the ISO the same. Then I'm going to put neutral density filters on and I'm going to bring those ISOs up so we can have a look at image quality together at low ISO and image quality together at high ISO. I'm going to bring them back here a little bit later, put them into Lightroom, and where I think we're going to see the big difference and where seven years old and a bigger sensor is actually going to be much superior is when we start to manipulate those images. I've never been entirely satisfied with how well the X-H2, the X-T4 images are, can be manipulated. I don't think you can push them very far. The GFX, I seem to be able to push a lot, lot further for obvious reasons. The pixel density is much lower and et cetera, et cetera. But I want to compare the two just to see whether this camera, which actually cost me less than that camera, was actually worth the buy. So. Join me, we're going out, find a nice sunny day of a nice location and we'll do the shoot and then we'll come back here and we'll put it into Lightroom and see how it looks. So you join me in my car, as you can see, um, there's a reason for that. Um, it's winter, it's the northeast of England, it's bitterly cold and it's a howling gale. Um, probably not the best day to come out and shoot the GFX 50 versus X-H2 uh, video, but it has to be done. So I've actually been out on the pier at the Herd Groin Lighthouse, a very, very pretty little lighthouse that is uh, quite historic and still in operation at the mouth of the River Tyne. And I've shot uh, pretty much identical shots on the X-H2 here and my GFX50, which is in my bag down there. Um, I started with a base ISO of 200 and then I raised the ISO, matching the exposure. Uh, so the exposure was exactly the same for each shot, raised up the ISOs all the way up to 12,800 on both of these cameras. That should give us a very good indication of image quality between these two, in particular when we edit them. At base ISOs, they should have a fairly similar image look and image quality, but when we start editing them, it'll be interesting to see how well the X-H2 holds up compared to the GFX in Lightroom. And then it'll be very, very interesting to see how the noise levels compare as I've raised them up. We'll edit the hell out of um, some images at various different ISOs and we'll see how it comes out. So I'm going to catch you later. Ironically, the sun's come out, but the wind is still blowing a gale. So uh, I'm going to go and find a nice cup of coffee and then go home.
So welcome back, I'm in my studio. Um, I'm refreshed, it's a couple of days later. I've warmed up just about since shooting these images over at Herd Groin Lighthouse. I've got them in Lightroom. The image you see on the screen now is a five image uh, HDR shot that I put together from the GFX 50 files and um, obviously edited them as well. And I think that's come out really, really nice. Um, I'll put the uh, final image up at the end of the video so you can have a look at uh, just how good GFX 50 is. Anyway, the images are in. I've got them in Lightroom. The images color coded green are for the uh, X-H2. The images color coded for red are the GFX 50. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at them at the base ISO with no adjustments. And then we'll go all the way through up to 12,800 with no adjustments, just to compare them for image quality, sharpness, dynamic range, that sort of thing. Uh, and they should be broadly similar at base ISO. We'll look at them at 12,800 as well. Um, you'll start to see some differences. And then what we'll do is we will edit the base ISO GFX 50 file um, to make it look a really striking image, perhaps a little bit like this. And from that striking image, we will copy the developed presets and paste them to all of the images. So we're editing really quite hard on the uh, on the GFX and the XH2 images, and we will compare them all the way up to 12,800 and just see how well those images hold up. Um, I mean, there's going to be an obvious winner, and that's going to be the GFX 50, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, XH2s seven years advance in technology on a smaller sensor compares with the older, bigger, medium format sensor. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna get into Lightroom now and I'll see you in a moment. So as you can see, I have them in Lightroom. The upper ones in the green are the X-H2 images and the lower ones in the red are the GFX images. From left to right, we've got ISO 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, and 12,800. And if I, uh, if I slowly click through these images, you have a little look at the histogram on the top right-hand side of the image you'll see that uh, the exposures are pretty much the same. There's a sort of slight variations as the light moved. Um, then we go down to the GFX. You can see from the histogram, there is definitely already a little bit of extra dynamic range in that GFX, that's to be expected. Um, but uh, so broadly similar images. And um, let's start off by having a look at the GFX images. And we're gonna look at it like this. And we're gonna zoom in at 100% here. Uh, at, 100, at 200 ISO, rather, you can see there's no noise. There's lots of definition in the image. It's a, it's a really nice image, very clean, clean image. The scroll around over the sky there, that looks pretty good. And if we go to the X-H2 image, same type, we'll just zoom back out. A uh, little bit darker, a um, little less dynamic range, but obviously still very clean, nice colors good definition, nice and sharp. You can see, just about seeing the uh, writing up here that uh, it's very, very clear at 100%. And if I do the same here, it's also very clear at 100%. So uh, let's just go through the, the rest of the GFX images. So this is at 200, the base ISO that we were using. As I mentioned before, um, the base ISOs of both cameras are slightly different. So I went for a 200 base ISO, which I think uh, works fine. Um, if we go up to 400, uh, still very, very clean on the GFX files, no noise at all. Very, very nice looking image, uh, lots of uh, definition and uh, tonal range and dynamic range in it. Um, we come through to 800, a little bit of noise creeping into the image. Now, if I bring this up to 200%, uh, you can see just a slight bit of noise at uh, 200%, um, but nothing really to concern about uh, at 800 ISO. Let's take that back down to 100% view, like that. And we'll go over to 1600. Again, you can see there's hardly any change in the image quality. Um, just maybe if I'm a little bit picky, just a little bit of noise creeping into the sky and the shadow areas at uh, 1600 on the GFX 50. And now we're through to 3200. Again, hardly any noise, certainly not noticeable. Um, looking a really, really clean image at 3200 with no uh, adjustments to it. 6400, again, 
you can hardly see any noise. Um, slight color shifts and slight uh, contrast shifts to be expected as you increase the ISO, but really nothing to write home. And that's quite a remarkable uh, image at 6400 ISO. And finally, we'll go to 12,800. And there is some noise, but again, it's very, very minor. Um, you can see a little bit more here over in the shadow areas. There's definitely some noise, um, but it's uh, it's quite remarkable for 12,800. So we'll do the same uh, with the XH2 images. Let's go over to the 200 ISO XH2 image. It's a little bit darker, although the exposures were identical. Um, as you can see, very clean, no problems at all on that one. So we'll go up to 400 ISO. Um, so for that to kick in, yep, that's good. Again, it looks very clean. There's a nice dynamic range to it. Uh, no real discernible noise, perhaps just a little bit of noise creeping in here at 400, but it was quite a dark day and um, there is a little bit of shadow noise, but certainly you'd have to be looking for it. So we'll come up to 800 ISO now. And again, very little noise, um, looking very, very clean. Uh, certainly a perfectly acceptable 800 and again still nice and sharp up in the uh, you can see the, the lettering up here no real noise in the shadow areas there and now we're coming at uh, 1600 just a little bit of noise creeping in at 1600 now you can see just a little bit in the clouds there and uh, certainly some in the the wooden structure here or the iron structure of the lighthouse just a little bit of noise but again at 1600 perfectly acceptable uh, 3200 definite noise now but again usable i think um certainly uh, it's not a distracting type of noise um that's certainly a personally that's certainly a perfectly usable looking uh, image at uh, 3200 so uh, 6400 uh, you can definitely see noise now in the darker areas and the shallow areas of the structure. The sky still looks fairly clean. You, you can see some noise in the areas where there is some graduation between lights and darks, shadows and highlights. Um, so this, is, I think, is beginning to get to the limit of the XH2's high noise ability. This is 64,000 uh, ISO. Um, if you zoom out, it looks perfectly acceptable, but at 100% there is some definite noise. And if we take that up to 200%, uh, you can see that noise is actually quite well defined. We'll go back to 100% and just for balance sake, have a look at the 12,800 uh, 12, ISO. Uh, and there we are. So we're back at 100% there. Uh, we'll just wait for that. And you definitely got some noise there. That's um, if you needed to use the image, it's probably usable, you know, in a small scale image. But if you wanted to print that large, you're definitely going to see some noise. But it's it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it's uh, a few generations on. Let's have a quick comparison between the GFX50 and the XH2 at 12,800 ISO. Um, and you can clearly see the difference. The GFX50 here on the right is uh, a lot less noisy at 12,800 compared. And it obviously has quite a bit more dynamic range going on at 12,800 as well. So uh, to be expected. Um, but I think, to be honest, the XH2 is actually holding up pretty well for a significantly smaller sensor with a much, much higher pixel density. So let's go to the second part of this uh, test now. We're going to go over into the develop module with the base ISO GFX image. So this is the GFX image at uh, 200 ISO. We'll pop into the develop module and I'm going to edit it uh, quite similar to that uh, image I showed you a little bit earlier. So we're going to do quite a bit of editing to it. Uh, we'll pull the blacks down. We will pull the whites up like that. We're going to pull the highlights way down and the shadows up a touch to give a little bit of uh, information in that shot there. Now we're going to use a mask to bring out the sky. Let's pull up the sky and we're going to drop the exposure down on that sky a little bit, add a little bit of clarity to that sky. Maybe a little bit of dehaze just to make that sky punch out. Yeah, that's looking really nice. Um, we'll go back up, back into the basic tabs, and we're going to use the uh, color picker tool and pick the red of the lighthouse. 
Uh, we're going to increase the saturation of that lighthouse a little bit and we're going to just lighten the lighthouse up a touch as well. So quite a striking image, um, quite a lot of uh, editing done to that. We'll add a little bit of clarity to the overall image as well and perhaps a little bit of dehaze. I wouldn't do this normally, uh, but dehaze is, um, is kind of a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It's quite a brutal tool, so it's a good way of showing up uh, image issues. So now if we zoom in on this image, you can see still extremely clean. It's not introduced any noise, any banding into the image. It looks very, very nice. Um, it's remarkable just how much you can push this image. You can see here there is some haloing around the actual lighthouse and the, the wind vane up here, uh, but that's just purely the editing technique. That's the sky selection and the dehaze and the, the massive amount of editing that's actually been done to this image uh, rather than anything to do with the camera's sensor. So that looks uh, quite a striking image. That's the GFX pushed quite nicely in post-production at 200 ISO. So what we're now going to do is we're going to take those developed settings and we're going to copy them. We're going to copy all the settings that we've done. So we'll check all here and copy. And now we're going to go over to the XH2 image at 100 ISO and we're going to literally paste these settings onto the image. So we do that and it will take a moment because it's got an AI to select the sky. Now it's a very different looking image but very striking. Now let's zoom in here. Um, again, very clean at 200 ISO, uh, possible dead pixel there, I'm not sure. Um, but no, the image is very, very clean despite all the editing we've done to it. Uh, again, you've got the haloing around the image, but uh, I'm not concerned about that. Um, certainly a very striking looking image, very clean looking image, a very sharp looking image, um, even with all this editing done. So what we'll do now is we'll go to, let's go to 1600 on the GFX. Um, so we've got 400, 800, 1600. And we'll paste those settings at 1600 on the GFX. So let's uh, paste the settings. Wait a few seconds for it to apply. And there you go. That looks a lovely looking image again. And let's just zoom in and have a little look around the sky. Again, 1600, loads of editing on it, lots of clarity and dehaze added to it. Very, very clean image, very, very nice. Possibly a touch of noise coming into the shadow areas there. Um, but overall, I think that's a very, very nice image. Okay, so what we'll do is the equivalent on the uh, XH2 now. So let's go, that's 400, 800, 1600. This is our 1600 ISO image on the XH2. Settings paste, and we'll see how that comes out. Okay, again, very striking looking image. Um, let's zoom into the sky. Um, at 1600, you can definitely see some noise, but it's very acceptable. This image has edited really quite well. Little bit of banding going on here, and some definite noise in these darker shadow areas here at 1600. Um, and some definite noise in the shadow areas, in the darker areas of the lighthouse. So uh, we've got both in uh, comparison mode here. And if we just zoom in at 100% on both, uh, you can see there's quite obvious differences with the GFX on the right and the XH2 on the left. There's uh, a quite significant noise in the uh, XH2, but uh, nowhere near as much noise in the GFX file. So we'll come back into the main screen mode, come back out and we'll pull up the 12,800 ISO and we'll apply those uh, that setting preset to that one as well. This is the GFX file. We'll just wait a moment for the AI. Uh, again, very striking image. Um, definite noise in that now. Um, probably I would say unusable with heavy, heavy editing at 12,800 ISO. You can see a lot of noise. Um, lots of detail though, I mean still plenty of detail in that sign there, but uh, image is very much breaking up at 12,800. Um, so we'll do the same to the uh, XH2 image, settings, paste those settings, we'll wait a few seconds. And there we go. So we zoom in and we can see again a lot of noise. This is uh, probably unusable as well at 12,800. Um, so I think at uh, 1600 definitely usable. Um, 
At 12,800, definitely not. I think at 32 is probably going to be the limit on the XH2 for editing, um, heavy editing, and probably 6,400 on the GFX. Uh, let's just out of interest do 6,400 on the GFX and apply the and apply the develop settings here. Okay, that's done. Um, yeah, I would say that's actually quite usable. Um, there is noise in the sky. At 6,400 with some heavy, heavy editing and some masking, definite degradation of the image over here. Actually, that's pulled in now, so um, it's a workable image. It's not one that I think you would uh, print to a large size, but it's certainly a workable image. If we do the same with uh, 6,400 on the XH2, let's just paste those settings there. And we zoom in. And that's quite noisy. That's very, very noisy. Um, contrast is holding up well. The definition, the dynamic range is holding up well. You've got some clipping here you can see from the uh, histogram. I don't know if we have anything similar on the GFX. Uh, not sure we got any major highlights on the GFX. We don't really, but uh, no, there's no clipping on that image. So I think in conclusion, um, they're actually a lot closer than I expected. Um, the GFX will hold up heavy editing until 6,400. The XH2 will hold up heavy editing to around about 3,200. At 1,600, both will edit really, really well. Um, so that, I think that's quite a surprising result. The dynamic range on both cameras um, seems fairly close. Um, obviously, it starts to pull away a little bit on the GFX um, at higher ISOs. Um, image quality and sharpness again very very similar it's only really when you start to edit heavily that you really notice those uh, the power of those bigger pixels in the the GFX but uh, overall a very good result I think for the X-H2 it shows it's an extremely good camera for an APS-C camera with uh, 40 megapixels um, certainly workable up to 6400 with minimal editing and up to 3200 with heavy editing so I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions about GFX 50 or the X-H2 or Fujifilm in general or photography in general, please, uh, you know, give me a comment below and ask me the questions. I'm quite happy to answer them and I'll see you in the next one.